Welcome to this video on populations and samples, unit 6.1 from S2. Now, in statistics, a population is a whole set of items that are of interest. So the population could be the staff members of a particular company, or the people that live in a town, or the students that go to a particular school. And any information that can be obtained from the population is known as the raw data. And what we're looking at here is a couple of things. One called a census. And a census is basically something that observes or measures every member of a population. And an example of that is that here in the UK, they carry out a census every 10 years, every household in the country, and it just basic information like job, how many people live in the house, ages, jobs, married, not married, that kind of basic information that can be used then in a variety of ways. Now, a census is a big undertaking. You know, if you have a large population, you know, if you were doing a company, but it was a large company, and you want to find something out, using a census is useful, but it is a large undertaking. It can be very time consuming and very expensive. So often what we do is we take a sample. Now a sample is a selection of observations taken from a subset of the population. And this is used to find out information about the population as a whole. So for example, if I had a school and I was looking at the students and that was my population and my aim was to find out some information, say maybe about the menu at the canteen, then taking a census would, if the school's quite large, take quite a bit of time. Whereas taking the sample would mean that as long as I take an appropriate sample, that is representative of the population, then that would still remain fairly accurate and it would save me time and, you know, in some cases money. Not in this one, perhaps, but in some cases. So to confirm, a census observes or measures every member of the population. Whereas a sample is just a selection of observations taken from that population, subset of that population. Now, obviously these have advantages and disadvantages, which is why you would choose when you would use a sample and when you'd use a census and vice versa. So let's look at them and they should really be opposite of each other. So the advantage of a census is that it should give a completely accurate result. And if I think of a sample, its disadvantages will essentially be the opposite of that, won't it? So the data may not be as accurate. And going with that, the size of the sample will matter. So if the sample's not large enough, it might not give us enough information about small subgroups of the population. You know, if I was talking back about the school, obviously there's different years in the school, so if I'm doing a proper sample, I should have a representative amount from each year group. So taking a large enough sample does matter. Now let's think of the disadvantages of a census. So the disadvantages are time consuming and expensive. Cannot be used if you're testing process destroys an item. So if I was a manufacturer and I was manufacturing um, I don't know how long a light bulb will last, how many times I can switch it on and off, on and off till it breaks. I couldn't use a census because if I use a census, it means I test every light bulb and I'd have none to sell. So I'd have to use a sample. 
and then the final disadvantage is processing that large quantity of data. If I do a census, I collect so much data, I might not be able to process it all. Wow, can't believe I fitted all that in. Good job by trying to read it. Hopefully it's uh, not too bad. Now, looking at the advantages then of the sample, they're going to be the opposite, aren't they? Less time consuming and expensive as a census. Fewer people need to respond. Much less data than in a census can be used if the testing process destroys an item. So that's kind of it. Now it's important to say less data to process than in a census rather than just less data to process because you still might have a large amount of data. It's just going to be less than if you took an actual census. Now final points here. The size of the sample is what's going to depend. How do I explain it? The size of the sample directly affects its accuracy. In general, a larger sample is more accurate, but of course it will require greater resources, whether that's time or money. If the population is very varied, you will need a larger sample than if the population was fairly uniform. So if I go back to the school, if I was only, if my population was just year seven, I wouldn't need as large a sample as if it was the whole of the school because in the whole of the school I would need uh, a sample or you know within my sample students from each year group. And finally different samples could lead to different conclusions just the natural variation in the population isn't it, it kind of makes sense if I take a sample of one thing and then I take a different sample of that population I could get slightly different results. Now a couple of words for you, so sampling units, this is the individual units of a population. So again if I go back to that school example, my sampling units are those individual units, so they would be the students. And then often sampling units of a population are individually named or numbered to form a list called a sampling frame. So if I was doing in school, Example again, you know, you would number each student, maybe starting at one, two, three, and so on. Or, as is often the case, a lot of students in schools will already have an ID number attached to them. So that could be the sampling frame. Now, this stuff isn't really that difficult. It's mainly terminology. We'll do a little example and a few questions just to get your head around it. A lot of this stuff kind of comes up with in questions rather than questions on it on its own okay like a party a party and stuff like that of another question so here we have a supermarket and it wants to test the delivery of kiwi for ripeness and it's going to do this by cutting them in half it's just the reason why it says this is not appropriate well if you test them by cutting them in half a census means every single item so you cut every single kiwi in half, which means you have none left to sell. So that would be a really stupid idea. Now, part B. The supermarket tests a sample of five kiwi and finds four of them are ripe. So they estimate that 80% of the kiwi in the delivery are ripe. Now, one way we can improve on this is simply to test more kiwi, a larger sample, because a larger sample would therefore generate a more accurate estimate. It's hard to say exactly what sample size you would take, really depends on how many kiwi you've bought. If you've bought a thousand kiwi, then you can easily do a sample of 30, 40 or even 50 kiwi, couldn't you, without eating into your profits, but by getting a, a far more accurate estimate. Hopefully you found this quite straightforward and useful. I'll give you three questions just to have a little go at. And then 
as usual I'll go through the answers at the end of the video. I would say that this video on populations and samples and the next one which is on the concept of statistic and sampling distribution of statistics they are a bit boring and they are quite straightforward but they do have some fundamentals that are part of questions within your exam not necessarily a question on its own so please don't skip over it make sure you do take it in try the questions it will help you out in the long run